We have some fast solar wind, a glancing solar storm blow, and some busy active regions are about to rotate into Earth view. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash SWEN. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week definitely picks up an activity. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, your eyes can't help but be drawn to region 3673 and wait for it. Bam! Right there. Did you see that? That was a massive solar storm launch. In fact, it actually affected several different filaments in the region. The coronagraphs show this massive partial halo. In fact, you can actually see what looks like part of that blast wave. That looks like it's actually going to be a solar storm that is affecting Earth just a skosh. So we could get a couple bumpy rides here over the next couple days. Also, when we take a look at the big blast wave, you can see that it actually affected several different filaments on uh, the Earth-facing disk. So we we are keeping our eyes on some of these filaments now because they may go unstable, especially near this massive coronal hole. On top of that, we're also dealing with region 3474. This region over the past couple days has just begun to really act up. It's definitely becoming a big flare player, so we're keeping our eyes on that as well. On top of that, we're also dealing with some fast solar wind from this coronal hole. We are definitely getting some, some decent aurora at high latitudes. We've even had a skosh of aurora down at mid latitudes. It's not been lasting all that long, but uh, we're expecting to get the influence from this over the next day or two before things calm down. So aurora photographers, uh, definitely if you're at high latitudes, you're going to continue to get a show but, uh, even through Halloween. But as we move into the beginning of the new month, things should be calming down a little bit for you. Now, switching to our sun's far side, we can no longer use stereo A imagery to give us a view of the sun's far side, so we have to simulate it by looking at HMI and AIA imagery of about two weeks ago to get an idea of what's going on in the solar disk. Well, look, taking a look at all that, we've got region 3463, 3464, and believe it or not, there's a little teeny tiny region right there. Do you see that? I'm gonna stop this so you can see it. This teeny tiny region, doesn't look like much here. In fact, it never even got a designation before it rotated to the sun's far side. Well, that little region has continued to grow all the way during its far side passage. And as we end up taking a look at HMI uh, helioseismology far sided viewing stuff from JSOC, you can see that new region right here next to region 3460 and 3463. Look at that dark region. Everything here on the gold, that is far sided sun. And you can even see a dark patch here near region 3469. So as we take a look at 3469, sure enough, this region was also growing. In fact, you start seeing it flaring a little bit. So those regions that were just beginning to grow, they are definitely the ones that are developing on the far side, and they should be rotating into view here within the next couple days, uh, possibly about uh, two to three days for region 3460 and, and 63, and then about four days for region 3469. So uh, get ready, amateur radio operators and emergency responders. We're going to start seeing that flare risk rise, and it looks like radio propagation is definitely going to continue to stay in the good range. Now switching to our moon, we are coming out of a full moon on our way to a third quarter. And by the fourth, the moon will still be about 58% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, you're going to have this bright companion. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Now switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still getting that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, we're expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm in through Halloween, and then things will begin to settle down as we move into the 1st of November. And by the weekend, we should easily be back at mostly calm conditions. So aurora photographers at high latitudes, you still could 
get a bit of a chance for aurora. Now, mid-latitudes, well, we're still only expecting unsettled conditions, but now we only have about a 20% chance of active conditions over the next couple days. Things will then, of course, settle down quite quickly, and we'll be back to uh, mo mostly calm conditions, if not completely calm conditions, by the end of the weekend. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are dealing with a few big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, especially region 3474. This is why our solar flux is sitting in the 140s right now, and that will likely continue to rise as the new regions rotate into Earth view at the end of this week. NOAA is giving us about a 25% chance of M-class flares at an R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and again, that's going to last over the next few days with that risk possibly rising to about a 35% as these new regions rotate into Earth view. We are sitting at minor noise on the bands right now, and that's likely going to continue to stay. We even have a small risk for X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout, but that's likely going to remain low even as we move in through the weekend. Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range. That is uh, at flight level 360 for you aviators, and this is the S0 quiet range for everyone else. We only have about a 5% chance of big radiation storms. That's at the S1 to S2 level, and likely that those conditions will continue over the rest of this week. It possibly might rise a little bit, especially as region 3474 rotates to the west limb, but overall the risk is going to stay pretty low. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, well everything seems to be uh, pretty good for you, and so you should be all in the clear. So the space weather this week is definitely staying on the active side. We do have the fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could continue to get a show easily over the next 24 hours or so before things begin to calm down, which should make your Halloween quite a happy one. But as we move into the 1st of November and early into the week, things should definitely be settling down quite a bit. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you guys are are dealing with you know minor noise on the bands right now things are getting a bit more noisy with especially with region 3474 plus we have those new regions that are going to be rotating into earth view here over the next couple days so definitely expect to get a bit more noise on the bands and possibly uh, r1 to r2 level radio blackouts easily over this week and possibly into next as well and now you GPS users, well, we have a little bit of issue, especially at high latitudes with the aurora ongoing, but that's going to settle down here pretty soon. But the main issue is going to be these radio blackouts as they begin to increase. So be sure to take or be a stay vigilant near dawn and near dusk, and your GPS reception should stay pretty good. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.